All right, in the red at the bottom position on the map, we've got a player who just defeated Huck, had some tense moments. He's on the team Prime. He is. There's a shot of his mouse, his face, his blink. Here's our foreign hero, a player on the team, Team Liquid. He is. The Gwid Huck. There's his Team Liquid shirt. It's a nice shirt. It's actually one of my favorite shirts out there. Well, a lot of teams don't really have jackets, and some teams kind of have jackets, but they don't really use them that much. A lot of teams stick with their shirts. But I think Team Liquid has one of the best shirts out there. This guy came from Canada to watch the GSL. Huck Whiting. For those of you guys who don't know, Whiting is, is like fighting, and it's, uh, it's kind of a chant that a lot of cultures use, not only Korea, to just kind of say, like, good luck, I hope you do well. It's basically a way of saying good luck, but it's it's a little different. I'm not going to go into a rant explaining that. Puck does do his trademark pro harass. So sometimes his pro harass is so... His pro harass, he's one of the first players to really do great pro harass, so for that reason, a lot of the time, players call pro harass Huck harass. Some people call Huck, Huck Norris. It's probe. It's like Huck Norris. It can't be defeated, but... That probe does see the gas, and that's all really that you can see at this point. If you can keep that probe alive a little bit longer, maybe kill an SCV, that would be pretty huge. Always good to weaken some SCVs, because when you attack later, it's going to be pretty significant. Now, Puck's going to have to get out of there, though, as the Marine pops. Just wanted to see if the tech lab is going to be made immediately. Back at home. Puck hasn't taken his second gas yet. I'm kind of curious to see if he's planning on doing that, and indeed he is as Maka takes the second barracks, makes a reactor, so most likely he's going to be doing a two barracks expand. Though the scary thing about making a reactor is if your opponent four gates you, sometimes you just don't have enough units to hold. So it's a pretty bold move to get that reactor. Huck, not a very four gatey player. You don't see him do it very often. Although, I, you know, we have seen him do it sometimes. In fact, in the super tournament, he hit some gates and went for a four gate. Worked out pretty well for him. So, Polt does see the second gas. Now, what will Huck do? He puts that pile over there, and that's exactly what Polt wants to see. Remember, if you're a Terran player and you're scouting a Protoss player's base, what you want to see is, did he take one gas, two gases? You know, occasionally, did he take no gases going for a Nexus first on a map like this? That's just not likely. But did he take one gas or two? How many gates does he have? And where are his pylons? Because if you want to scout later, if it becomes important to scout later, you want to know where it's important to scan. If you scan the wrong place, you waste your scan. You're like, oh, I already saw all that. So you want to know where the pylons are. If we see a pylon kind of over on the edge like we saw from Huck, it's probably where you want to scan. Now Huck has added two gateways. He's gone up to three. Sometimes this means you just kind of do a little bit of a sentry expand, but it can mean a lot of other things. He has moved his probe over to the pylon I was talking about. What's he going to make? Get a shot of it. It's a Twilight Council. Now it could be a DT expand. It could be Blink. Blink becoming a lot more popular in this matchup. Pros is realizing, well, if I have really good control with my Stalkers and he doesn't have a lot of Mirage out, I can just win. You know, there's like almost no way he can hold it. And this probe getting a little active on the map. He's trying to check for proxies. That very probe, though, may end up proxying a pylon himself. Now, we're going to find out here in just a second as this Twilight Council finishes. Is Huck going to make a Dark Shrine or is he going to start Blink Research? He has made just one Stalker. He's making a second one right now. Normally, when you go for Blink, you can squeeze out a few more Stalkers, but it is going to be a Dark Shrine. Get a shot of it in a second. And there's that forward pylon. So he's going to use that pylon to warp his DTs closer in to Pult's main. Now, we saw a Dark Templar build yesterday not really work out because his opponent reacted properly, saved some scans, walled off. Pult has already walled off. He's trying to scout up here a little bit. Going to do a little bit of pressure with this attack. This is actually somewhat of an attack that can end games if you don't react to it properly. In fact, it took a game off MC, this very same type of pressure build from Pold. He's doing the exact same build in the exact same map. As he takes up, whoa, taking up to two starports. So he's going to follow this attack up with two port banshees. That's very unusual. And Huck has an isolated stalker out here. Pold may decide to attack that. Because Pold's actually playing it defensively. He's not entirely sure what's going on. He knows there's some sort of tech. He's probably thinking it's going to be either DTs or it's going to be Void Rays kind of hiding out here. Huck hasn't expanded yet. Puck has expanded now because this is going to be a DT expand, but Polt doesn't know it just yet. Remember, Polt does have a wall off. 
Now, he does have those two star ports finishing up. If he makes both of those into tech labs, so you can get some Banshees out, possibly a Raven, that'll be good for him. But it's all going to be about the scans here until that happens. So both of these star ports have added tech labs, so it is going to be most likely a two-port Banshee follow-up. But if Polt uses this first mule right now that he's got saved up, he is going to be in a lot of trouble when these DTs roll in. He's going to save that one scan, but Huck is going to send the DTs in one at a time. If he does that, the first scan will kill the first DT, but the follow-up DTs will be quite deadly. And here he comes. He's actually going to send two DTs in at first. Nope, does split those up. Polt going to have to scan here. Does scan. He wants to keep that wall off alive. That's why Huck's brought some of these units. He wants to break through that wall off. Now he's going to run up here again. As soon as that scan fades away, at least he should be running up here again. There he goes. Going to try to use those Stalkers to help out, most likely. We see that his opponent isn't scanning. He may send up the other DTs and try to break that depot down. Oh man, Huck is going to be in trouble if he doesn't do any damage with this because two port Banshees are pretty scary, especially since Polton hasn't really lost any of his army. He's not really losing anything to these DTs. There's a, there's a huge investment involved in going for DTs. And does break that depot down. It's starting to get a few kills on that Dark Templar, but the Raven is out. Now this is the scary timing. Not only does Polt have two port Banshees that are going to be following this up, which are strong units indeed, especially if you don't have a lot of Stalkers, but this attack that he's going to do with these units is going to be pretty scary. His stim is almost done. Right now, as far as armies go, Huck's got a tiny one. Polt's got a huge one. I mean, that's relatively huge given the state of the... Look at that! You think that's going to hold this? I don't know. I think Huck's in trouble. Holt even having missile turrets up in his base. He's totally prepared for any possible sneaky DTs. That's all Huck's got, and this attack is going to be quite fearsome. The Raven is not going to have enough energy for point defense drone just yet if he attacks now. If he can drop an auto turret, that can be quite good. The crucial thing here, though, is their stim, and Huck only has two sentries, three sentries. A lot of them do have energy. He's going to do some good forest fields. He may have enough to hold this, but I, I think it's going to be pretty tough. The Zealots are starting to fall, and the Stalkers as well. There's just too many units here. I think Huck is going to die to this counterattack. And when DT expands, go badly. This is what happens. The Raven not with this army. The DT is starting to get a lot of kills. Bolt does back away. Now the DT will fall. Another auto turret dropped. Auto turret adding a little bit of DPS to this army. It's basically like a crazy uh, Marine on steroids. Its attack rate is about the same as a Marine. Its damage a little bit stronger got a lot of armor so it's just kind of like adding a strong marine to the mix and this attack has been held for now but if we look in the middle of the map i'm sure we'll get a shot of it in a second huck doesn't have that many stalkers those are his last two stalkers and there are two banshees coming in banshee one banshee beats one stalker and two banshees beat two stalkers especially when one of those stalkers is weak and two banshees plus the rest of Polt's army beats a weakened huck that's for sure now this Raven is very low on hit points, so if Huck targets that and uses DTs, he might be in good shape. Some good forest fields, just trying to dodge these Stalkers and target them down the best he can. Dodge the Zealous, rather. And look, now that Huck just doesn't have any units, he doesn't have any anti-air, that's it! GG! So DT expands seems to be the trend on Zelnaga Caverns for this matchup, but... Marine King and uh, Bolt just showing him can't do it. I'm sure that the Prime team has experienced a lot of DT expands in the past and they've talked about it here on camera faster than I expected. Hello, guys. So that was kind of, um, I want to say, a textbook example of how a DT expand can go wrong. Following up with two port Banshee is actually really cool if you can get away with it because two port Banshee is something you don't see very often in TVP because if your opponent has enough stalkers and he's got observers out, you can deal with it easy, but... You know, something we don't even know, or at least I didn't I didn't quite look at the production tab to see, is if Polt had gotten Cloak, what would have happened then? I mean, Huck had a Forge, but if your opponent has Cloak Banshees, your army just is powerless without an Observer. You don't engage near the cannons, you just die. And Banshees are so strong, when the Stalker count gets low, things get out of control. So I like that follow-up by Polt. Um, it's kind of, it's a one base tactic, so a lot of people say, well, that's kind of risky. I'm not entirely sure if I would have done the same. It's an interesting choice. You're up a game, your opponent goes for a DT expand, you thwart it completely. Follow up with a two-port Banshee, it's probably going to work. All right, we're going to have a little interview here with our winner. Congratulations. 
아, 일단 오늘 이겨서 너무 기뻐요. <웃음> 네, 기쁘시겠죠. <웃음> 거기다 오늘 또 여자친구의 생지라고 그래요. 아, 네. 네. 자, 그래서 그 버프 때문에 오늘 또 잘하지 않았나 생각이 들고요. <웃음> 자, 그리고 크리스 로란제 선수를 상대로 해서 이제 예리한 암흑기사 찌르기를 잘 막아냈어요. 그때는 좀 긴장이 되거나 힘들지 않으셨나요? 네. 예측하지 못한 플레이가 너무 당황하긴 했는데, 당황하긴 했는데 네. 다행히 제가 우주공항을 빠르게 올리는 빌드라서 밤까마기를 빠르게 생산해서 오히려 더 좋게 작용한 것 같아요. 아 그렇군요. 이제 위기를 기회로 아, 네. 자 그리고 이제 16강에 올라가게 됐는데 만나는 선수가 so 되는 게 기가 막히게도 이 곽하노 선수와 또 만나게 돼요. 킹킬입니다. 그러면 더 궁금한 거는요. 연습은 어떻게 해야 되는 거예요? 네. 그게 저도 참 애매한데요. 팀 킬일 경우에는 You're meeting your teammate Mark of Prime next time. 네. How do you feel about that? 네. 그러면 이제 어, 컨닝을 막기 위해서 이렇게 뭐 대지 않습니까? 네. 그런 거 대고 합니까? 뭐 어떻게? 해요? 음, 저는 그냥 했어요. 예전부터 만약에 팀 킬이 나오면 그렇게 막지는 않고 일단 하기만 했어요. We don't block our computer monitors. 자 but, uh, 그리고 마지막으로 원래 이제 팬분들에게 한마디 부탁하게 되는데 <웃음> 오늘은. 특별하게 여자친구의 생일이다 보니까 네, 여자친구에게 한마디 드리겠습니다. 네. Yeah, so today is your girlfriend's birthday. That's actually the case. I was 내가 told that earlier. 대회 준비한다고 잘 아유, 챙겨주지도 못하는데 항상 믿고 따라줘서 고맙고 생일 축하해. 야, 너무 부럽네요. 네, 축하드립니다. 앞으로 선전을 기대하겠습니다. 네. 네, 이상 최성훈 선수를 만나 봤습니다. He said happy birthday. He feels kind of bad because he didn't take care of her as much as he would have liked to because he was practicing so hard for the tournament. So. That was that interview. That was pretty interesting. Always good to see pro gamers having girlfriends because, um, you know, I'm told actually that his girlfriend is pretty. I was gonna say pretty cute, and then I was just like, no, pretty. She's pretty. That's what I've been told. I haven't seen her. I was hoping she was gonna come down. Don't think she's here, unfortunately. I wanted to. I wanted to see what she looked like. I was a little curious, but uh, she's not here. I asked um, one of the Korean commentators, "Is she gonna come?" And he was like, "I don't know. I mean, might be far for her." So I think we're going to have a two-minute break here in just a minute. We've got a lot of awesome matches coming up. Next, we've got Zenex Lion versus Zenex Coca, a ZVZ. It's going to be two Zenex players battling it out against each other. Two Zergs battling out. It's like fighting for control of the Brood or something back in Brood War, if you guys remember playing the Zerg campaign. So here's our two-minute break. I'll see you guys in just a minute.